Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I am so excited because our guest, Carrie Harlan, is back with us, and she has such great information. She's going to talk about the change of seasons and how that affects our body and things we should do according to the seasons to make ourselves feel better and look better. How are you doing, Carrie? So tell everybody about yourself and, and how you've been since I last talked to you. I know it's wonderful to talk with you again, Stacey, and I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you. And I am doing well because spring is coming and that's always yes. one of my best seasons. So yeah. we get out of the winter coming into spring and I do want to talk about that. But I am doing really well. Um, everything with me is fine. We're um, developing and launching our new skincare line, which I'd love to share with you, which is based oh, yeah. as well. So we can talk about that. So a lot of good things. Yes. Excellent. Oh, I'm very excited to hear that. I can't wait to hear about the new skin products. Now, you mentioned, um, you know, I I personally, you know, realize that when new seasons come about, you know, our body changes and and so should the way, you know, when, when you have go from cold to warm to hot, our skin, our body, everything changes. If you notice you want to eat more in the winter, in the, in the summer, you eat less. Your skin gets drier in the summer or drier actually in the winter. And you get more, you have, you, you, you get more vitamin D in, in the summer, which makes you feel better. And your skin is in better condition. So your body changes according to the seasons. Can you explain to people about the importance of um, how the body, the seasonal change affects the body and how different tips that we should do to help ourselves look and feel better? Yeah, absolutely. And probably the best way to illustrate this is to start by asking some questions. So whoever's listening, you know, sort of nod to yourself or jump up and down and say, yes, that's me. But I'm going to start out by asking some questions. Um, do you jump out of bed each morning with vitality? Or do you have to drink coffee in the morning to get going? And how many of you work through lunch? Do you tend to crave sweets or sugar or caffeine or bread or even a nap in the afternoon? And how many people or how many of you have tried just losing weight? Do you tend to have bouts of worry, of anxiety or depression? Or maybe you have difficulty remembering things. And how many of us end up the day feeling like we've been hit by a bus without the motivation to get up and go for the next day? Right. Now, there may be many, many reasons for those concerns, but one very simple solution is you're living out of sync with the natural cycles of nature. So it's really quite simple. Connect your cellular clock with the ebb and flow of nature cycle, and yeah. you get to live a life of balance, a life of vitality. But when we ignore these cycles of nature, which we, you know, we tended to dismiss yes. nature, mm -hmm. we disturb our inner clocks and then life becomes a struggle. Yes. But it's easy to get into a routine, isn't it, Stacey? You know, oh, we, we eat the same way. We were just talking about that. We work, we exercise in the same way day after day. But did you know that microbes in the air change from one season to the next? Also, microbes in your gut change seasonally. And did you also know that we have receptors in our brain for neurotransmitters that are also change seasonally? Right. So imagine feeling healthier instead of older with each passing year. And these aren't pipe dreams. They're the reality of living within mm -hmm. the cycles of nature. Yes. So what that means is we are circadian beings and we have to live in sync and in harmony with all of nature's rhythms to survive, to thrive, and really enjoy life on this planet. Yeah. And Ayurveda has been making this case for thousands of years. And today this knowledge is, has been repackaged in what is now called circadian medicine, which is based on Nobel Prize winning science. So according to magazines like Science Magazine and the circadian science or chronobiology is also called Right. Our diverse microbiome fluctuates with the changing seasons and our shift in diet. But Stacey, that creates a problem for us urbanized humans. Yeah. Because, you know, we've just got done saying we tend to eat the same foods day after day, year after year, regardless of seasonality, regardless of where it's grown. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this type of eating will feed only a small population of bacteria in the gut. 
And then that leads to bacterial overgrowth yes. or SIBO. And we're seeing more of that now or other digestive problems like gas, bloating, constipation or IBS. We're seeing that a lot more. Yes. And a good way to explain this is, you know, I understand that nutritional science, for example, says that broccoli is good for you. And we probably should eat broccoli because, you know, right. to improve our health, it probably is good for us. But for gosh sakes, it does not grow in every single season. <laughs> that, do not eat broccoli or any other food for that nature every day throughout the year without altering your diet accordingly. Right. Right. For example, amylase, which is a starch digesting enzyme, this has been found to wax and wane seasonally. Mm -hmm. So during the season when starches are harvested, which is when it tends to be in fall, then our body's amylase enzyme surges. So isn't it yes. amazing that our body knows how to do this? Yes, it is amazing. So if we only eat the same foods, let's say we're on a high carbohydrate diet month after month, season after season, year after year, yeah. we're going to get a staple of microbes in our gut that become really good at digesting and delivering carbohydrates, which is right. basically sugar, glucose, yeah. which then puts sugar into your bloodstream. Yeah. So could it be possible that this type two diabetes epidemic that we have today isn't because or it is only because we eat the same foods day after day, year after year. Mm -hmm. So if we amp up our carb digesting bacteria, because we're eating high carb diets, which our American diet tends to be, yes. then we're dumping way too much carbohydrates into our bloodstream, that mm -hmm. which is sugar, our bloodstream becomes overwhelmed. It boosts insulin to drive that into our tissues and our muscles. Yes. And guess what? The body says, hey, that's way too much fuel. Um, I can't handle all this. So we store that excess fuel as fat. And here's yes. our link to the obesity problem as well. So, so then it makes sense that all these circadian medical issues, which, mm. as I said, is Nobel Prize winning science, yes. is in fact due to our disconnect from these natural rhythms, which is so important because food, like everything else in nature, is delicately balanced. So eating seasonally may be the most powerful way, Stacey, to keep our circadian rhythms in check. Um, but many of us have forgotten what that looks like. Yes. And how do we even know sometimes what's in season? You know, I can go to the grocery store and I can find all kinds of food and yeah, sure. They must be in season because I can buy them. Right. But, um, you know, it's hard to ignore the fact that seasonal foods have been feeding us since the beginning of our evolution. Yeah. And as a result, our health depends greatly on a diet that changes with each season. And there's science evidence out there that says the microbes in the soil the plants they attach to and the health benefits of both do change from one season to the next. So for example, we're in winter. Mm -hmm. Winter is the season for eating high protein, high fat. Yes. We need that to combat the cold and the dryness of the season. Because yes. if we dry out, we'll get things like constipation, we'll get excess mucus. That's the body's way of trying to avoid drying out. Yes. We then get congestion. And we get all kinds of problems. So um, a high protein and high fat diet, nuts and seeds um, are really good for us this time of year. But hey, guess what? It's January, February, March, swimsuit season's coming up and it's tourist season at the gym. Mm -hmm. And every diet guru out there is saying, hey, this diet is the best diet. This is actually not a season to diet. We yeah. want do ourselves a lot of harm if we're into this sort of you know diet um mentality right now and it gets so confusing because you know there's so much out there in the media cross you know information that gives people a, a, a delusion of what's right and what's wrong they don't know what's right and they uh, what's wrong and that's the problem is that every diet guru has an old their you know their own way of losing weight and staying in good health and they go we go in trends and it, you know people follow these trends instead of following what they should should be and what's best for our body 
So the best way to look at that is um, I had a client who came to me and she, she put herself on a high, uh, sorry, a low carb diet because she wanted to lose weight. Didn't do well, initially lost weight and then didn't. Um, and then read a book that said um, potatoes rather than Prozac. So she decided to go on potatoes <laughs> because that must help her, her digestion. And then that didn't work after a while. And then she read how, you know, that a, a low glycemic diet doesn't have potatoes at all because potatoes have a lot of sugar in them and that must be terrible. And she said to me, I am so confused because all these people cite scientific evidence that says they're right and everybody else must be wrong. So you're right. It's very, very confusing. All the diets, the most popular diets tend to um, boil down into three basic diets. There are either high fat, low fat, or um, low carb, high carb. So we can distill all the diets down to three basic um, diets. And they're all right. Mm -hmm. But they're all right for a particular season. Right. High fat diet's right for winter. Come spring, we want to lose the heaviness of winter. So we go on to a low fat diet in spring. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's naturally what's available. You know, all those bitter greens and herbs that come into being in the sink in, in the spring are detoxifying. Yes. But come summertime, we actually want a high carbohydrate diet. All those fruits and vegetables are high carbs because we have more um, daylight hours in the, in the summertime. So yes. we, have, we have more energy that we need to put out. Come fall, as it starts getting cold and dry and windy again, we have those root vegetables, which are really nourishing and warming for the yeah. fall and winter. So each one of those diets that the diet gurus are saying, hey, ours is right and everybody else's is wrong, right. is probably right for three months of the season. Mm -hmm. So there's no diet that's right for the whole year. And that's the mistake we're making. I see so many people in society do that, though. They get into a routine, they get stuck in a routine and they go by that routine. And even if they have some people that have to change it up because they don't like eating the same thing and, but they stick to the same thing. So if they're a fiber person, they're still eating a lot of fibers they're just eating different fibers. If they're a, you know, fish and chicken type person, you know, they might eat fish and chicken, but they might make it differently. But there's, you know, I see so many people get stuck in one specific routine and they think just like you were saying, that they have to do it all year round. But that's the worst thing they could yeah. do for themselves, right? Yes, we need to change seasonally. As I say, we've got gut bacteria that depends upon it. We've got neurotransmitters that depend upon it. So we are seasonal human beings. Which, and we've kind of forgotten that in our urban world. You know, we put a sweater oh, yeah. on in the winter, take it off in the summer, and that's our nod to the seasons. Um, but there's so much more about living seasonally, including changing lifestyle, not just our diet, but oh, lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and, and we kind of know that it kind of makes sense that what we do in the summer is not necessarily the same as what we do in the in the winter. Um, but we are far more seasonal beings than I think we give ourselves credit for. Oh, definitely. I agree 100% with you. And have you ever noticed that even mentally and physically, the seasons affect you? Because when at in the winter, when it gets dark quicker, you, you feel tired earlier, you want to go to bed earlier, and you do change your appetite and you do go more towards the fats and the high proteins. And then when the summer comes, it's a, your body starts to feel revitalized and you feel more energetic and you don't, you don't feel like you need those foods anymore. And you start to eat differently and you start to gear towards those fruits and vegetables, you know, and I, I see myself, my behaviors and the way I eat change according to the seasons. It's just the way the weather affects you, I think, tremendously. Absolutely. So for example, all those root vegetables that we should be eating this time of year actually have a lot of antioxidants that um, increase serotonin. Mm -hmm. So this is the time of year we can feel a bit depressed. We call it winter blues, seasonal affective disorder, but a lot of people have problems this time of year. So by eating um, root vegetables that increase serotonin and also nuts and seeds have a lot of antioxidants in them and, ser and also um, enhance serotonin levels. So these are feel good hormones. This makes us feel good. Right. So by eating the right foods in the right seasons will also take care of our mental health as well. 
Now, how do you feel about the the fish, the chicken, and the meat? Do you you know there's so many people out there that want to go vegetarian or vegan, or they they eat fish, but then they eat fish that is close to the bottom of the ocean and it can carry mercury. Like, what do you suggest for people that you feel seasonally on each is is healthy for you? Like, so for instance, we just talked about the meat. The, the chicken and the fish. How do you feel about that when it comes to um, including that in your diet? Do you feel that is good for the body or do you feel certain things are not as good for the body? So it's a personal choice as to whether you want to eat animal products or not. Um, I have many clients who choose to be vegetarian or vegan. I have those that actually need animal products because, because animal products calm and ground the central nervous system. So for anybody who has a lot of anxiety, anybody who has a lot of gas and bloating or constipation um, or sort of scattered thinking, we, we kind of need to sort of ground them a little bit. And animal protein is really good for that, but not everybody likes animal protein or wants to use it. You're right. If you're using animal protein, then make it the highest quality animal protein you can. That that goes in, and look at the practices of, of our agricultural practices and our mm -hmm. farming practices. Um, this is the time of year to have more protein, but there's a lot of protein in nuts and seeds, for example. So if you just increase your protein by 10%, then you're, you're right for the, for this season. So for example, I'll add eggs, which I won't eat in the summertime, but mm -hmm. I'll add them into my winter diet as a protein. Now I'm not totally um, vegetarian. I will eat some animal protein because it's indicated for me personally that it, yeah. it's grounding for me. Um, so by increasing protein doesn't mean you have to do chicken, fish, or, or any of the others. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of protein in plants too. Um, so nuts and seeds are probably wonderful this time of year. In fact, you should be sort of munching on your walnuts. And But again, nuts have got a bad rap. They're high fat, mm. so we don't tend to eat them if we want to lose weight. So yet there's a lot of good things. Walnuts, for example, are in Ayurveda are considered a brain food. Right. They, they actually increase the ability for your brain to think really well so if there's any brain fog or sluggishness then um, walnuts are really good for this time of year so does that answer your question yes uh, it does mm -hmm. now uh, can I ask you another question what yeah. is your reason of why you prefer to eat eggs during the winter but you stay away from them in the summer because winter is a high protein um, high fat um, season Okay. And I will get all my protein for the whole year, not so much in the summertime. Most of it actually comes in these three months of the winter season. Um, when I go into spring, I'll move on to other foods. I might have a few seeds. I won't do nuts because they're too heavy for okay. the spring season. And there will be weight gaining if I eat nuts in the spring or eat nuts in the winter, oh, sorry, in the summertime. So I'll tend to move on to seeds, which are more easily digestible in the spring. And this is naturally what we should be doing. Um, but that's why I'll add eggs in the wintertime, because I'm looking to add more protein during the winter, because I need that to combat the dryness um, and, and the coldness. Yeah. Of the now, what kind of foods do you prefer, do you suggest in the, in the uh, springtime? Because you mentioned the seeds. What else do you suggest? So spring, we think about what's naturally um, around you in the spring. So we get the first fresh um, greens coming in. We've got dandelions we or mm -hmm. dandelion greens, which are really good for us because they're incredibly bitter. If you've ever eaten them, you know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And detoxifying. Yes. Spring is the season to detoxify. We only have to look at nature to see it. But, you know, we've got all those fresh roots coming out. Asparagus comes out the very early fruits, these are all more astringent. Um, and, we, and we don't even feel the necessity of having heavy root vegetables or, you know, sort of the heaviness of nuts um, in in the winter time, uh, sorry, in the springtime. So right. when we get into the spring, we naturally want to lighten up. So look at what's around those first um, greens that come in, the spring greens, the spring, uh, bro not bro broccoli, spring um, spinach comes in, all those sort of young, fresh greens that come right. in mm -hmm. are all very bitter and detoxifying. It is the season to detoxify, which is why in Ayurveda, we cleanse in spring because it, to 
get rid of the heaviness and, yes. and the sluggishness of winter as we come into the spring where we want to lighten up and be more energized right. just as nature does you know everything bursts forth in spring with lots of energy yes. we too are supposed to do that yes. but only if we've rested in the winter which we don't tend to do either winter is the season for deep rejuvenation deep resting curling yeah. up on the couch with your favorite book watching netflix this is the season to do it right and to go to bed early come spring we feel that sort of spring fever where we want to get up and do and clean and sort of freshen up right. ready for the summer where we put lots of energy come fall we start scaling back a little bit again ready for the deep sleep of winter right that's what we're supposed to do seasonally that's what we're designed to do biologically Yes, I agree 100%. Now, you also were talking about skin and, and the difference in your skin texture according to the seasons, how it changes and how you should maintain your skin according to each season, that you shouldn't keep doing the same routine, just like food. You should be changing up how you care for your skin as well. Can you talk a little about that and tell us a little about that? Yes, absolutely. So as I sort of preach to anybody who will listen about seasonal changes. Um, a lot of my clients will say to me, so, okay, can you recommend a skincare product that will also change? So I went out there because there's lots of skincare products out there to look at what could I recommend for my clients? Well, it had to be green, obviously, and it had to be natural and it had to have no preservatives and chemicals and all those things that we don't want in our skin because exactly. whatever we put on our skin goes into our bloodstream. Yes. I couldn't find anything. I could find, you know, products that were chemical free, that were more botanicals, that were more so-called natural. Yeah. Um, but I could, but somebody who has dry skin in the Northeast in winter is, needs very different skincare to somebody who's in the Southwest or somebody who's in the South with all that humidity, but also has dry skin. Yeah. And there was no skincare products that took that into consideration. So I thought, okay, let's do it ourselves. So we are um, in the process of launching our skincare line called Uniquely Yours, which takes into account all your skin concerns. So for example, we take into account the environment. What season are you in? Where are you living? Because you right. living in a populated urban environment is gonna be very different if you're out in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and also, what's your lifestyle? How much sleep are you getting? That's directly related yes. to this. What are you eating? How much blue light are you exposed to? Because that blue light will increase lines and wrinkles. Yes. How much sun are you exposed to? What kind of stress levels are you under? And then once we have all that information from you, plus your major health concerns, whether for me it's lines and wrinkles or whether for somebody else it's eczema or psoriasis, right. once we have all that information, which we do through a very sort of interactive questionnaire with you, then we can formulate the right ingredients for you. And that's what we're doing right now. So we actually partnered with a company um, that took my formulas initially and sort of upgraded them and uh, we're, we're really happy that uh, this is going to be phenomenal for people because it's personalized. You can't get more personalized, more personalized than that, which is why we call yeah. it uniquely yours. Yep. I love it. That's and I haven't seen anything else like that that can take into account who you are. No, I haven't. That yeah, that kind of makes sense. I yeah. like that a lot. Now, when, is, when will that be launched? And do you have an idea of when the product will be coming out? Yes, probably next month in March. Oh, how exciting. Month. Yep. So we're very excited for that. We're just uh, finishing all the design work on labels and things like that, which is also really important. And making sure that all the packaging is recyclable. Um, that was also very important for us as well. So we're putting all that into place as we speak, and then it should be ready in uh, in about a month's time. So, yeah. Oh, how exciting. Now, is this something that we're going to have to go onto your website to find out about and purchase? Or is this something that will be available through Amazon or other retail stores? Or are you no, working on that right now? It's working through our website. So what you'll do is you'll take our skincare quiz, which asks you all these different questions. Mm -hmm. And then we get those results. And then we can formulate based upon what you've told us. So it'll just be through our website. Oh, Certainly, actually. wonderful. Yeah. Yes, I love it. I love it. That is amazing. 
What made you come up with this idea? It was just it was just because you went out and you were looking for your own skin products to use for yourself and then you couldn't find them. Is that what the motivation came from? Motivation came from because my clients were looking. Oh, I, I see. Yes. So the, so we had sort of developed our dosha kit, which is our seasonal kit that sort of supports you. Yes. From that, I've branched into some um, facial um, a serum and a cleanser and a moisturizer and and pe people loved it people kept yeah. saying we want more we want more we want more so that's when it's like all right we want to really sort of personalize this and take into account a lot more about who you are right Partner with another company that can sort of um have the knowledge more of the more of the scientific um basis of the studies behind them um, so that we can be really sure when we formulate that these ingredients are the right ingredients for you. Right. So, um, I'm not a chemist. I don't have a lab in my basement to be able to do this. So it made sense to partner with a company that who can do that for us. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, then it's your unique formula that will change season to season. And we want it right. to. It should change season to season. If you're still using the same skincare that you used three months ago in the fall, it's probably not right for you now as we're beginning to come into spring. Right. Uh, and then once we're in spring, very different skin care to what you need in the summer. And we kind of know that then in the summer, we should have something different. Um, and also where you live, depending on where you live, it should be very different depending on what you're eating, depending on how much stress you have. I'm on a computer as you probably are most of the day. That blue light yeah. has to reflected in my skincare to avoid those uv rays which will increase um yes. lines and wrinkles if i'm not careful i i put a blue light screen over my my actual screen to block out the blue light Good so that, yeah and that made such a difference and i felt better i felt less drained and I, you know it does help with the skin and the wrinkles as well but even mm -hmm. on my eyes and the way i was feeling it improved when i got a blue light blocker over my my computer screen people yeah. don't realize that you know the things we we they don't see they don't realize how much of an impact you know, and, and even when you were talking about the microbians and, and how it's in the air, you know, mm -hmm. people, you know, I didn't even, you know, of course it's in the air. I know it's in the air, but I don't think about it too much. You know, mm -hmm. I always think about the gut when I talk about the microbians. I, but I wasn't thinking about, you know, oh my God, you're so right. The air, you know, and soil, oh, bacteria in the soil, everything, yeah, everything. Soil. You know, yes. as soon as you walk outside, we have a, we have an environment of toxins that are open and, and, and they enter our bodies and they affect us. And this is where all the illnesses come. And this is where all problems occur too, is the environment we live in and where we live and how much toxins and how much pollution is, is surrounding that individual. But we don't take that always in an account because we don't see it. No. And if you think sort of 80% of our immune system is actually in our gut, and we now know this, we didn't at one time, but we now yeah. do, then it kind of makes sense that your gut microbiome is incredibly important. Yes. So, you know, 85% of Americans have digestive issues. That means it's a bona fide issue that they've actually gone to a physician and reported. They've either got gas and bloating, constipation, um, loose stools or acidity or heartburn, and these are very real problems. And we can walk into any drugstore and see aisle upon aisle of gas X and all these things for all these problems that we have. So what's going on that 85% of Americans have digestive issues? We've got to look at what we're eating. Yeah. And we, we tend to blame the food and say, oh, because it's gluten or because it's corn or soy or the big ones that we become sensitive to. And maybe it's simply that we're just not eating in season. Right what we need to do. I agree with you a hundred percent. And, you know, I had a question I was going to ask you, oh, I can't remember it now, but there was a question I wanted to ask you in relation. Oh, I know now it was our skin. And so in the winter time, we find that we have dry skin. Now for, for people that haven't tried your product, but should try your product when it comes out next month, for people with dry skin because of the winter and the dryness in the air and all the other goodies that cause dry skin, what would you suggest that they do that's really good, 
either it be food or any type of holistic, um, you know, alternative method that they can do in, in their home, in the convenience of their own home to help them with their dry skin. So first off, recognize the season that you're in and the really good skin comes from the inside out. I mean, products definitely help and that that's right. why we develop these products. But, you know, that that wonderful glowing skin is really about health. Um, that's especially this time of year, that winter glow from the inside out. Yes. But if we want to look at our environment, we've got to decrease the dryness. So not only is the air drier than it normally is, and it's colder, especially if you're up here in the Northeast. Yes. But also we tend to put heating on that dries us out even more. Yeah. So we want to minimize that. And the best ways to minimize that, yes, we can put humidifiers in our rooms. And I have humidifiers. I have lots of plants that I'm watering all the time. So that's yes. natural humidifiers. Um, and we want to avoid doing the things that dry us out. Yes. So don't take long, hot showers, as tempting as it is when we're cold, because that's going to dry us out even yes. more. This is the time of year to oil. We want to oil our face. We want to oil all of our skin because we we can get um, dried legs this time of year. And even people will dry out to the point that their lips crack or their hands or the soles of their feet or their heels will crack. And that's quite common for a lot of people. Yeah. So that drying out, we don't want the skin to dry out because if it cracks, then this is an opening for bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, viruses to enter into the skin the skin is meant to stay as as a semi-permeable membrane so we don't right. want entering into it that way so oiling is the best thing um we we do a wonderful product called 100 times washed ghee which is really good it's the best moisturizer in the world i haven't come across anything better than it but it is incredibly time consuming to make it takes five hours to make wow. because you take ghee and then you wash it a hundred times in copper vats. Okay. It is such a phenomenal moisturizer that they actually use it in burns units around oh, the world. They? So when we use it here, it's really good for eczema or psoriasis and really good for cracked heels or chapped lips. Right. So that is wonderful. So don't be afraid to use heavy creams cream-based um, products as opposed to light nourishing lotions. And then it comes down to diet. Root vegetables are naturally unctuous. When you think about, um, you know, a sweet potato, there, there's a sense of oiliness about it, just yeah. slightly. Mm -hmm. That sort of oiliness we, we want. We want to hydrate because if our skin's drying out, right. we're probably drying out from the inside out as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to lubricate the digestive system right. because good digestive system means you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. You're pooping when you're supposed to be pooping. Yes. That's part of the detoxification system. So your skin's glowing. So get those root vegetables in, eat more fat. There is nothing wrong with fat because a higher fat diet provides insulation. We need um, to rebuild and the rejuvenative um, aspects of fat in our system. Yes. My favorite fats for winter, olive oil, avocados, ghee, coconut oil. These are all really nice. Right. Protein. This is your building block. Your skin's made of protein. This is a building block for the body. So eating um, a lot more proteins is, is going to be really good. You know, we talked about sort of nuts and seeds and things like that for the winter. Right. Fermented foods are really nice for the winter. Um, you know, that they help with um, repopulating the gut bacteria. They're a natural probiotic. Um, but if you're doing kombucha, you know, a little shot glass a day is all you need. We tend to overdo it. You know, fermented foods are good. I must eat this whole jar of pickled cabbages or sauerkraut, or I got to drink a 20 ounce bottle of kombucha. Yeah. Um, so fermented cheeses, yogurt, sauerkraut, kombucha are really nice. And one of the best ways to have really good skin and to, and is an antidote to the cold and dry of winter right. is to increase the amount mm -hmm. of soluble fiber you eat. Because when soluble fiber mixes with water, mm -hmm. it becomes lubricating for the gut. Think about oats. We add water to it and it's got a slight you know, lubricating aspect to it. It's sort right. of, slimy, it's greasy. Um, and this is one of nature's strategies to right. insulate the gut from the coldness and the dryness of winter. So it warms, it soothes, it lubricates the intestinal walls. 
So that's going to show up in your skin as well. And mm-hmm. we go through all that in, in our one-on-one programs. When I coach my, my clients, yes. we, we certainly go through all that, what's right for you um, in terms of the foods and everything else. So does and that I- help? Does that give some sort of very concrete oh. examples of, of Yes, it does. And what I love about what you do is people don't realize, but each individual needs to have their own personalized program. A lot of times people will throw out these programs, but they're very generic and people don't realize that everybody's body reacts differently and we all have different needs. And that, you know, the one thing that you do with each of your clients is that you personalize them according to what you know, how they fill out their form, what they tell you, you know, what they explain. And then you're able to actually give them a program that is uniquely made for them to help their bodies and help their deficiencies and what their body is asking for that they may not realize themselves. And that's what I love about the Holistic Highway, your website and what you do is that everything is personalized individually and that no, no individual is the same as someone else and that we should be treated with our own individual, you know, um, remedies, cures, options, alternatives, behaviors, lifestyle, eating habits, all of it wrapped up into one. Everybody has to have it according to what their body needs and everybody body body needs something differently. And that's what I, I, I love about what you do. And, um, you know, I had one question when you were talking about dry skin, I had several clients that had like either extremely oily or cystic oily, um, you know, skin. And, you know, we have several layers of skin. And like you said, it's, you know, we see the outside, but it's actually those layers inside the damage is coming from inside. And, you know, I, you know, what is your intake of, you know, um, of helping these people with extremely oily skin. Cause sometimes I just, I, I can't believe the amount of oil that they're producing and I could temporarily help them with, you know, decreasing the amount of oil, but obviously there's more going on in the root cause, you know, their root cause, there's something that's producing all that oil. What's your intake about people that have excessive oily skin to the point sometimes where they're having excessive pimples or they're having cystic pimples. And we're not talking about teenagers going through their hormonal stages. We're talking about adults that have already went through the hormonal stages and they're become more stabilized. Yeah. So we see that a lot um, in a a certain sort of metabolic type, this more cystic acne. And it's tough because in wintertime, they can still be dry, but oily, if that makes sense. Yes. I find that a lot with with, um, adult acne, that it's easy to strip the skin of more oils because what you see is oil. So Mm -hmm. you must have to reduce it. So you put these products on the skin, which are, are really... Um, harsh on stripping those oils and then that person still has you know the cystic acne but now they have dry skin as well so they've got irritation so when the dryness happens then they become more irritated so now they have cystic acne plus (laughs) irritation yeah and it's all because they did the wrong thing it wasn't about removing the excess oil not from the outside anyway right it's about moisturizing that dry skin in the winter time Mm -hmm. Um, and then what is going on what is the root cause because there is excess oil so always we have to look at the underlying root cause so is it dietary is it lifestyle are there certain things that this person's doing that the body is under stress and because the body is under stress it's producing more oil it's yeah. not always just about what the skin is doing. Exactly. What, what's happening um, inside. We often see with cystic acne, actually, that they have sluggish digestion. They tend to put on weight and they're just not efficient fat burners. So yeah. we have to look at well, why is that, that these toxins are building up and you're seeing that expo- expressed in the skin. I mean, the skin is our mirror, isn't it? Of what, oh, what yes. our health is like. And we can see it with somebody who's got sort of that glowing skin and, you know, their eyes are shiny and they've got a cold nose and they look like your golden retriever because that's all the markers of a, you know, a good looking skin Um, is we can, we see that vitality and we, we know it when we look at it, we say, oh my gosh, that, that, that person's healthy. It's got nothing to do with age. It's got, 
got to do with they just look healthy they've got vitality and that's because they're doing all the things that are right they're probably eating seasonally they're eating what's right for them they're doing what's right for them and the evidence is out there stacy those people who implement something that's tailor-made for them are just going to reach their health goals that much quicker and that much easier than those people who grab the latest generic thing that's come down the pike right but, you know, in order to do that, we have to know who you are. So it's really important for us at the Holistic Highway to go really deeply into who you are. And in our programs, we include genetic testing as well. Yes. That way we can get to know you right down to that molecular level. And then this information is then combined with the information from an Ayurveda consultation. That way we can create this really multifaceted plan that is broken down into nutritional support, exercise support, seasonal routines, lifestyle support. So everything is tailored to you personally. Right. And that's what makes it successful. And, and that's where the scientific evidence, we've been doing this long enough that we can say, okay, when you do this, it works. Right. When you just follow a generic routine that that's you know not tailor-made for anybody except the yeah. masses, it's not necessarily right for you. In fact, in some ways it could be harmful. Exactly. And that's what I try to explain to people too, is because they don't realize that they're looking at one problem, but they don't realize there's a root cause why that problem is occurring. And it could be many different reasons, or it could be a, a blend, you know, of, of reason and why it's actually happening. And they want to fix one problem, but they don't realize that there could be more problems it is more problems occurring and that we like have to get to the root cause because the root cause is what's what we're seeing is the the res, end result but there's mm -hmm. a lot of other things going on deep down inside like you said you could have stress you could have digestive issues it could be generic you know genetic it can be many other things that we have to take into account so yes we could give you a temporary fix but it's not it's not going to be a permanent fix and in order to be a permanent fix we have to go down to the root cause and that takes time. And it also takes lifestyle changes because you can't, yeah. you, many people want a quick fix nowadays in our society and there's no such thing. You know, it takes time and dedication. And if you do make lifestyle changes after a while, it, I don't, it, it just becomes natural. I think for many people, they don't even realize the changes. It could it's become a part of their life. Yeah. I think what I've seen with with um, all the people that I talk to is people are quite happy to make changes initially because yeah. when people come to me, it's normally because there's something wrong. Yes. Um, so they're quite happy to make changes. Where people get frustrated is if they make changes and there's no difference. You yeah. see that weight loss programs. You know, I, I was talking to a client the other day and she said, you know, I've been working for a nutritionist for years. She's taught me a lot, but nothing changed. Right. Um, and it's so she was frustrated. And understandably so. So at that point, we give up. But if when you're making changes, you start feeling better and you start right. thinking, oh, my gosh, I am sleeping better. My digestion is better. I've got more energy. My sex life is improving because right. I'm sexy. All these things are signs of good vitality. And if that's happening, then you want to stay with those changes. Then you're yes. like, yes, great changes. It's when those changes don't make a difference that we give up and say, huh. There's no skin in the game. Why should I do it then? Right. Yeah. And I think yeah. people also have to realize when, you, when you're saying about weight loss, we sometimes fixate it on the numbers. Our body sometimes knows what our body needs to be and our body plateaus. Now we might, we might lose the inches. We might feel more energetic. We might not experience digestive problems or bloating, but you know, you might not lose any more weight. You might plateau, but then you're seeing other positive changes that are occurring in your body. Cause I feel like sometimes your body knows what your body needs. And sometimes do you, do you believe in the plateau? Cause a lot of women go through that certain stage, our metabolism slows down, hormones change, women plateau and find it very hard to lose weight. But I feel that, you know, sometimes the body also knows what it, your body weight should be. And at a certain point, it's harder to lose weight because you've kind of reached that plateau, I feel. I think sometimes people get fixated on a number that they want to see on a scale, regardless of whether it's necessarily healthy for them. Yes. 
Um, I'll, I'll have clients that come to me because they want to lose weight, you know, 50, 60 pounds, and they've been struggling for many years. I don't offer weight loss programs. I don't do it. I don't believe in diets. Yeah. But I do see weight as a symptom of an underlying imbalance. Mm -hmm. You know, how come you're non efficient fat burner? Is it the food you're eating? Is it your digestive system just can't handle it? Yeah. Is that under stress? What else is going on? Is that a toxic buildup? So once we find out again that underlying root cause, then the weight tends to come off. Yeah. Whether your weight is what you think it should be in your mind because you've got this artificial number that you've picked out the air that feels good, or maybe you yeah. once wore that weight 25 years ago, I don't know. My goal for my clients is yes, lose weight if that's if if your body's holding on to extra weight for a reason. Mm -hmm. But I want you to be strong, I want you to be healthy, I want you to feel good. I want you to get up in the morning with energy, have sustainable energy out throughout the day, sleep really well, digest everything well, and and, and have that glow, have that sense of vitality. Yes. And I find that once people reach that, even if it's 10 pounds, perhaps more than what they originally thought they should be, yeah. they are feeling really happy. And also it's not about the scales. I've had clients who the scales have gone up, yet they've lost two, three dress sizes. Yeah. So how do you feel we know as women we put on a pair of pants even if they're yoga pants and we know full well whether we've put on yes. weight or not mm -hmm. so we don't need scales to tell us but yes the, the whole weight loss industry and it breaks my heart Stacey not that we're sort of focusing on weight loss but I will have clients say oh I've been on this program for the last year and it's just me it's because I can't do it I'm not disciplined enough and they take on that whole guilt yes. and they feel so bad with themselves that they just don't have the right route enough self-discipline to do it and again once I explain well the diet you're on is probably right for three seasons or yeah. for only season out of four um that takes the pressure off and people are like okay you know it's not about me I'm not wrong the diet's wrong right and the diet industry is a multi-billion dollar industry and it wants Terrible. you to because then it can sell you another diet so yes a lot of money to be made in the diet industry yeah which is anyway don't get me on that soapbox i okay. know i i think we can oh, talk about so many different things for so many hours you and i but you know what we basically today we wanted to focus on seasonal um changes in your diet and how you take care of your skin so before we close let's just go back to the seasonal changes what would you suggest to people if you had to quickly give them a few tips for each season some major um changes or tips that they could do for each season that will have a, a positive impact on their body so if we talk about you know right now we're in winter what would you tell them about winter that would make them feel better or you know look better you know if you know some simple changes that they can incorporate in their lifestyle okay so winter is the season to slow down and hibernate so thoroughly enjoy it once you accept that about winter, that it's a time to deeply rest, then we can really enjoy the season. I used to hate winter because it's cold, it's dark, mm -hmm. all the things I dislike about it. But, you know, it gets dark at night and I curl up with a book in front of the fire or I watch my favorite Netflix show yeah. and, <laughs> and have long aromatic baths and, do, and go to bed early. And now I don't feel guilty. Right. So turn the artificial lights off. We don't have to have lights on till midnight. That just extends the day when naturally we're not to ex expected to extend it that much. Yes. Um, enjoy that. Enjoy all those warming root vegetables that are right for this season. Have a higher fat, higher protein diet. Um, and thoroughly enjoy just slowing down because that deep rest and rejuvenation then allows us to burst forth in spring with a lot of energy. Spring is about cleaning out, letting go of things that no longer serve us, um, purging through all our wardrobes and things that we don't need anymore. And, and naturally we, we do feel like that. We do call it spring fever. So we yeah. still feel it. Enjoy the, the seasonal foods that come in spring, which are all those spring vegetables and detoxifying. It's a time of year to go on a cleanse. Mm -hmm. And then in the summertime, it's a high carbohydrate diet, really enjoy all those fresh fruits and vegetables, get out more, be more active, snooze in the afternoon sun, if you want to. And then come fall, 
we're going to sort of um, go back to those root vegetables as the air gets colder and drier. We want to sort of start getting ready for winter, sort mm -hmm. of that descent into just slowing down um, and enjoy that. And then after the busyness of the holidays, really enjoy the winter season for what it is, that sense of silence, that quiet, that hush that we see the world taking around us. If you look at the natural world, yeah. you know, if flowers blooming or very few, there might be a few berries, that's about it. There's no <laughs> growing, you know, the grass isn't growing, but we know nothing's died. It's just dormant. It's just yeah. almost like it's taking a deep sleep. And that's what we're supposed to do as well. Yeah, right. So if we can just sort of look around us and try and think back to what's what what are animals doing yeah. i mean squirrels right now that they're, they're eating definitely um a diet that's high protein with all those nuts yeah but they're not getting overweight i don't see squirrels falling out of trees because they're too <laughs> <laughs> animals seem to do this quite well without oh. any recommended daily allowances or you yeah. know having a whole guidebook of how they have to eat right so I, th I think if we just sort of go back to what is in season and just educate what's in season. That's going to be the biggest bang for your buck as far as your health. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. Now for people who want to try to find you, where should they go for your website and how they can get in contact with you and all the other good stuff? Yep. So two things, you can go to my website, the holistic highway.com and that's H O L I S T I C the holistic highway.com. Um, also, direct kerry at the holistic highway.com and if you want to do that and just say that you heard me on stasis um podcast then i'll send you out the winter foods list so that you have that so you know the best foods um that are right that are in season for this year so um i'd be happy to send that out but you'll have to email me kerry k-e-r-r-y at the holistic highway.com and also, uh, tell everybody, you, several years back, you wrote a beautiful book. I loved it. It was very informative. Tell everybody a little about the book, because I think it would be so beneficial, because when I read it, I learned so much from it. So tell everybody about the book and where they can find the book as well. Thank you. So I get to be an author, too, which is very exciting. <laughs> Um, and the book is called The 25-Day Ayurveda Cleanse. This is one of our seasonal things that we do. And don't be put off by the word cleanse. Cleanse is such a buzzword. It doesn't normally conjure up anything good for most people. Mm -hmm. But the 25-Day Ayurveda Cleanse is actually a digestive reset. And we traditionally do these twice a year, once in spring, as we talked about, to lighten and brighten up after the heaviness of winter. Right. The other time we will cleanse is in the fall, and that's to build our immunity for the upcoming winter. So I wrote this book as a way to help people do some of the, 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 the right seasonal things to do. And an Ayurveda cleanse in spring and fall is one of the biggest changes um, that people can make in terms of how they feel afterwards. So after an Ayurveda cleanse, which is just resetting your digestion. Yes. You're going to have clearer skin, um, better digestive issues, um, or no digestive issues, better digestion, less brain fog. You're going to have more vitality. You're just going to feel and look so much better. So it's a great way to start the season. Um, so my book was written for people who I can't do one-on-one -on -one programs with. Right. This is one of me. So... <laughs> Um, it, it's a way to sort of get that information out and help people go through a cleanse. It was one of the biggest game changers for me. I have my own health story, which we can talk about another time. But one of the first things I did was an Ayurveda cleanse. And I was absolutely amazed that the difference, because I had chronic fatigue, the difference that this could make for me. Yes. And I suddenly had energy again, energy to play, to do, to think, to dream, to yeah. just be normal. Um so it, it it it's a phenomenal um, game changer. So I so yes, the twenty five day Ayurveda cleanse. You can actually get it at Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Nobles, all the places that you buy books. That's wonderful. You know, I did an Ayurveda cleanse, and my entire body did a whirlwind of change. I felt 
more energetic. I felt more focused. Like my whole entire body, like just changed over a, and it. And it happened very quickly. It, it wasn't like a slow process. As soon as I started going through it, you know, mm -hmm. within a month, month and a half, you see the changes all of a sudden you see little improvements, but then it built, the improvements get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time you finish your Ayurveda cleanse, you feel like a new person. It's a, it's an amazing feeling. It, it's your, but you don't realize how, how your body just slows you down when there's so many toxics in your body, but yes, you know, absolutely. And, and we put it down to just sort of, you know, it's just the way it is. I'm getting older. So what do you expect? You know, I expect my joints to ache when I get older, or I expect to put on weight as I get older and not necessarily so. Right. Don't those things who says those things are supposed to happen just because you've got older exactly. what happens as we get older is that stress accumulates over the years what we've done wrong in with our diet for example if we're not eating seasonally catches up with us eventually yes. so that's what may be happening yeah so a cleanse is a great way to reset it's, it's a great first step it's not the only step you do feel great afterwards you're absolutely right and then what I like to do is sort of connect with people and say, all right, that's the great first step, but let's not go back to all the things you used to do. Let's maintain those changes so you can carry on feeling good and even feel better. So yes. it was a way to try and reach out to people to have them. I loved it. It's, a, it's an amazing book. But, you know, before we go, just tell everybody one more time your your website. You mentioned it several times, but I always like to mention it one more time at the end because it just sticks in their heads. So just tell them one more time your website name. Yep. So it is theholistichighway.com. Don't forget to put the in. Otherwise, you'll find some psychologist somewhere. And I think she's <laughs> my people going to her. So it's theholistichighway.com. You can always email me direct. I'd love to hear from you. It's Kerry, K E R R Y, at the Holistic Highway. Um, reach out um, to me and um, just say that you heard me on the podcast, and I'll send you out, even if it's not winter anymore and you hear this down the road. If it's spring, then I'll send you out the spring foods list so that you've got the right foods list that's seasonal and right for you. Excellent. Kerry, it's always such a pleasure to have you on the show. I hope you'll be back soon and we can talk some more and then help some more people because your, your ability and your knowledge in this area is phenomenal. And I, I think a lot of people are going to benefit when they hear this podcast today, because, you know, I don't think people take into account how our bodies change each, each season. And that routine could be a good thing in some ways, but it also could be not such a good thing in some ways. So we have to always change it up a little. And I think you, you've you really put, gave, gave a, a lot of information to help people realize that change is a good thing. People might fear it, but it, we actually need change in, in our body and in our life in order to, to work to its fullest capacity. So thank you so much, Carrie, for being on the show. Once again, you are a whirlwind of knowledge and I love having you on. Thank you. Stacey, it was my pleasure. It's always lovely talking with you. Take care, love. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye-bye.